brand, it's my brand's name, Dom. Chef Mike Inked. Got you. I get it. I get it. I'm glad, because not a lot of people do, honestly. They get really confused when I try to explain it to them. I'm like, ah, the amount of explaining I'm doing already uh, means you, know you don't understand it. <laughs> Never mind. Forget it. And it's white, right? Top that. Top that. I'm hot, and you're not. But if you want to hang with me, I'll give it one shot. Top that. I fucking love how they're dancing in that. No, no, it shouldn't have. Are we get? Are we ready? Oh, we're ready. We're up and running. We're up and running. Hello, we're getting ready to record here. Why do you have a country accent all of a sudden? Shut up. Don't call that out on camera. Damn it, start over. <laughs> <laughs> all right, here we go. <clears throat> Hello, welcome everybody. This is the Let's Talk About It podcast, the podcast that aims to break down the wall between the consumer and the passionate people who aim to please them. Every week I'm interviewing another chef from my hometown of Albuquerque, New Mexico, and at the end of each episode, we will make a one-of-a-kind taco that represents my guests and their passion. Uh, I'm Dominic Valenzuela of Dia de los Tacos, and today I'm interviewing Mike, Chef Mike White of High Point Grill. Hi, Mike. How are Hi, you? Dom. I'm fantastic. How are you? Super, dude. I'm really excited to be here with you, man. Thanks. Thanks yeah. for coming to me. Absolutely. Yeah. You were, uh, we're in foreign territory That's today. Right. Yeah. Instead of recording at Dia de los Tacos, we're over here with Mike at uh, his restaurant, which is beautiful, by the way, man. Thank you. Um, how did how did this come about? Oh gosh, um, I was looking for a second location at okay. the time. Uh, I was looking all over Albuquerque. I uh, had some my eyes on an East Side location actually, and then uh, the my first location out in Mariposa Rio Rancho. Uh, the I don't know what you want to call it. The building ownership, let's just say, went awry. Okay. For for you know, to put it lightly. Right. Uh, so I, I had to find a place to relocate to altogether. Okay. I worked with some great realtors and uh, they found this spot and they said, well, we don't need to look at the east side anymore since it's one location. So we looked at the west side. This place came up and it was literally exactly everything I've always imagined in a restaurant. Old, rustic, Italian, New Yorkish, kind of underground, speakeasy-ish almost. Yeah. Like, you know what I mean? Just that whole vibe. And that's what this place is through and through. You know what I mean? Just from the from the unfinished concrete floors up to the brick, to the steel, to the hanging patio lights Absolutely. inside. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's exactly what I always imagined. So that's awesome, man. Just worked out. Um, so are, are you partnered up in this or this is a sole? Uh, I have a secret partner. Ooh, Ooh and some... some My mother. <laughs> Secrets out. No, no. My mom backed me uh, okay. because, you know, my uh, ambitious 33-year-old self doesn't have great credit. So <laughs> let's put it – let's leave it at that right there. Uh, you know, mom's is always there when it comes to that. So, you know, uh, yeah. yeah. But no, otherwise, yeah, operationally, uh, management, everything else, it's, I'm a sole owner. Yeah. That's awesome. Uh, so – with the first one, was that your first venture in the entrepreneurship, or did you? Second, actually. Second. Uh, I owned a food truck before that. Oh, did you? I did. Uh, it was called Manic Munchies. Okay, actually, yep. I remember hearing about that. When, yeah. When uh, it was operate? the Moody Foodie LLC, <laughs> you know, which is perfect for me. Um, <laughs> yes. But yeah, Moody Foodie LLC catering and food truck. It was the uh, food truck operated as Manic Munchies. Um, we did some bars downtown and stuff, and then every day we were out at Ask Academy in Rio Rancho. They didn't have a, a cafeteria for right. the for the children there. It was bring your lunch only. Okay. Uh, and my niece went there, um, so I was like, screw that, you know. I took my food truck up there. I started slinging pizzas. Yeah. You know what I mean? So cause I had a I had a full size pizza oven in my oh, uh, truck. Wow. So we'd make some scratch pizzas and we'd sell them to the kids and uh, uh, make sure they had options other than walking to McDonald's next right. door. You what, know what I mean? What year was that? What year is it right now? 2019? 2019. So that would have been 2014, 15. Okay. So you must have started up right after I left it. Was I yes, actually, because I worked a few events with Raul. Okay. Uh, yeah. um, uh, that's when I started to come up, actually, publicly uh, entrepreneurial. Um, I worked a few different concerts and stuff with Street Food Boulevard okay. and stuff like that. Yeah. That's, that's kind of where the entrepreneurial 
part of it started for me. Awesome. So you were right in that that tail end of like, um, like the social media like burst as far as like uh, like the Instagrams and and like yeah. making videos. Oh, absolutely. It was actually the great food truck race that made me want to yeah. step out. You know what I mean? I was like, shit. All these other people, you know that you know, no offense, don't know what they're doing right. or are being successful in food trucks. How mm-hmm. about somebody that knows what they're doing with business? Cause my background is business management and oh, restaurant wow. management. Nice. It's 15 years of corporate restaurant management. So I figured I could take my love for food and my knowledge in corporate restaurants and just apply it to that. And I was right. right. I kicked ass on a food truck. What I didn't know is that you have to be a mechanic, an engineer, a plumber, an electrician yeah. to also run a food truck. Absolutely. And I was none of those things. Right. So, yeah, I mean, we could kick ass all week, and then at the end of the week, if your generator breaks down, you didn't make shit for money, man. Like, exactly. you're out. Like, yeah. that's it. That was uh, in the Manic Food Truck. Sorry, man, there's so much, like, here. Yeah, munchies, yeah yes, there's sir. so much here that I want to talk to you about. I, I had no idea that you had uh, – it makes it makes, it makes makes total sense that um, that you had uh, management experience prior because yeah. of, of just how I see how you operate your business, how, like, structured it is. That's why I'm like, why he's not doing this all by himself, is he? Like, he – like, like yeah. is it? But 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 if you have the right structure, whatever. I'm doing it with the help of Mike and Mike. <laughs> That's um, right. Yeah. You know, but yeah, I've I've uh, I was a general manager of a restaurant when I was 16 years old. Okay. I graduated high school early. Yeah. Uh, and I was uh, I actually opened the Krispy Kremes that were out here with one of my buddies. Um, nice. So I, I I moved into general manager uh, general manager position by the time I was 17 years old of corporate restaurants, and from there it was just kind of a slippery slope. You know, a lot of people know when you're in this industry, especially in New Mexico, once it grabs a hold of you, you are sucked into it. Mm -hmm. So, uh, yeah, the next 15 years I got all the way up to, you know, running multi-unit corporations and stuff like that. And, uh, and, 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 you know, I won't say any of the names just because, but yeah, there's a lot of different, very local New Mexico, uh, corporations out here where I was responsible for the entire chain, you know? Um, and I did that for so long. I just, I was like, all right, well, clearly really good at this you know yeah. i was the one that was sent in to fix up the stores to make right. everything better and uh once i did that long enough i was like shit man why am i not doing this for myself yeah. like if if corporations are fighting for me to do it for them why am i not doing it for me exactly you know yeah. take the leash out. um exactly yeah. so that's that that was the first venture uh, my mom helped me buy a food truck uh and then that we started from there and the first day it was the most difficult day of work i've ever had and the most rewarding. Yeah. I knew from that point on I would never work for anybody else in my life. That's beautiful, man. Yeah. Um, that's actually the same thing that I – that same point that I think a lot of people will, if they haven't come to it yet, come to that crossroads of understanding their true value and understanding, like, mm-hmm. their work ethic. Like, I look at you and, and like, your work ethic is, is – untouched like Thank i don't you. know anybody who can keep up with all the things that you got going and how much you keep throwing onto your plate Thank you. and um you know how you're able to balance it all um you know so i applaud you for all of that and that you you were truly an inspiration to me as, as far as like how hard i should be pushing it i appreciate you know what I'm saying? that and um you know i hope other chefs are taking you know take more notice of that and understand that just like at the top doesn't mean like you get to sit, kick back and relax. Absolutely if anything, not. it's more work, you know. And the only thing that will help you get through that is that if you've preconditioned yourself sure. to working that hard. <laughs> no, you said it perfectly. I, I I'll tell you this: when I won Chef of the Year last year, that to me wasn't a reward. Yeah. I mean, it was to a degree, but it was an assignment. You know what I mean? That means for the next year, at least, if not there on after you've got to show why you earned that. You yeah, know what yeah. I mean? So if, if anything, like I didn't take that as, yeah, I've been rewarded for my hard work. I took that as I've got to work my ass off now. I've got to show why, you know, so exactly. I've, you know, just, I just took that and kind of use that as my inspiration influence and try to make this place better, you know? <laughs> That's awesome. Um, well, let's go back and, and let's talk about the first day on the food truck, man. Why? <laughs> yeah, that, what happened? What happened? Oh, um, I don't know. Uh, after the third or fourth anxiety attack, like, uh, uh, I, I think I sold one slice of pizza the whole day. <laughs> like, I, I went home and cried. Yeah. I was like, I was like, well, shit, this was a mistake, you know. Yeah, like, yeah. I didn't know anything about entrepreneurship, which was the problem, you know. I didn't go to business school. I didn't go to. I didn't go to college. Um, and I didn't have an apprentice or sorry, I wasn't an apprentice to anybody, whether it comes to culinary arts or business. Right. So I didn't know what I was doing. I was literally just like, all right, well, shit, I have this truck and I know how to cook. Right. 
I know how to manage a restaurant, but this one's got wheels and it's different territory and it's, it's it completely different. Yeah, yeah. Like, please don't think if you know restaurants, you know food trucks. It is a different breed. Yeah, so day one is, I, you know, I, I hired my buddy to help me out and uh, we sat out there. Uh, I want to say it was in front of a clothing store out downtown. Uh, it was a friend of mine's and then, uh, God, it was just a disaster. It was a disaster. I was there for six hours and I sold a slice of pizza. And I just thought, I was like, did I make the biggest mistake ever? You know, because yeah. I was making some good money in these, all these corporate gigs. Right. Um, but no, I just, uh, you got to grind. You got to, yeah. you got to, you got to learn and adapt every single day. Absolutely. You know, I mean, you're not going to be successful without failing and yeah. failing a lot. You know what I mean? And every little failure, like day one was a complete failure. Yeah. But in that, it was success. We learned a ton from it. We learned how to move forward. And shit, it wasn't like we fixed it in the next day. You know, that stuff takes months. Yeah. But uh, you you have to you have to have that heart to keep learning from it every single day and keep adapting. And that's what we did. Right. You know, until what? Where was the the turning point for you? And like like where you started to get some positive momentum? Sure, sure. Um, I did a few events actually. Uh, we did one about six months after being open. Actually, it was one of one ones we did with Raul at Street Food Boulevard. Okay. We did this concert and it was a car show. Uh, the concert was completely terrible, by the way. There was like 14 people watching Chameleon Air, so it was hilarious. But the car show before it was awesome. You know, we had a cool car show, right. um, and uh, uh, that's the first time anybody came up to me and said, "I've heard about you." Yeah, I was like, "No shit." You've heard about me. What does that mean? Like, you know what I mean? So from there, it was like, all right, well, I'm making an impact on the community, whether it's food or something bigger. Right. I'm making an impact. Absolutely. You know? Uh, and, and that's the that's when I decided, all right, I'm going to go all in on this versus, you know, because up until that point, you're still on the fence. Like, every time something breaks down, like, should I just, should I take this job? You know, you're getting right. offered these high salary gigs for corporate restaurants and stuff. And Absolutely. you're not paying yourself when you're an entrepreneur. Yeah. So it's a tough line to walk, you know. Yeah. But the first time somebody comes up, you said, "Man, I've heard about your food." That was payment for the whole year, yeah, right there, yeah. you know. So that, that that's what makes the decision. Absolutely, man. Yeah, there's something special about um, just having that connection where you get recognized, you know, and, yeah, and people absolutely. know that, uh, you know, they just start paying attention to you more. You know, I mean, it's you you do it all the time too. You know, just walking around and and um, you know, you got a lot of people that you already care about or whatever bringing somebody yeah. else on, you know, yeah. is, is very hard. You and know? that's the best part of it now too, is yeah, that, yeah. I mean, I, it's, it's people telling people telling right. people about you now. Right. It's just like, this is amazing. Like it's, it's, you know, your food speaks now. It's Absolutely. your food has its own voice, yeah. you know, and people are coming just to taste that bite, you know, Absolutely. and that's something that's to me and to every chef, that's something special Absolutely. right there. You know, yeah. that's, that's like someone saying, Hey, I went out of my way just to hear this one song. You yeah, know yeah. what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. wow. Thank yeah. you. You know? Yeah, there's so many times I've had people, um, you know, say they they caught wind of me or whatever. They were up in Santa Fe, or actually, what was very beautiful. You know, we started a little taco stand now inside of uh, Albuquerque Indoor Carding. You know, so it is like a lot of people label it as like a hidden gem. But uh, you know, I'm having people from like New York who are right. just in town for business. Isn't that incredible? And then they just like heard from the the bellhop or whatever that. Yeah. Hey, you got to go try these tacos if you're in town or whatever. And, and they come and see you and you're like, what? Yeah. You know, and then now they go out and they, you know, and it's, it's, uh, it's really wild to think about it all, you know, but, um, at the end of the day, you know, like, um, it's like you said, just my focus is to constantly get better, mm -hmm. you know, let everything else lay out and, and let the cards lay as they may. But, uh, my job is just to, to continue to be better, yeah. continue to improve and not to get comfortable. Absolutely. Yeah. Never get comfortable. Yeah, yeah. No, it's never, so never boring. get comfortable. Never think that you've learned it all. Never, no, yeah. no, never get complacent. No. And you'll, you'll keep being inspired by those feelings. If you think you've already made it, if you've already done it, then absolutely, you're only hurting yourself. If you, right. if you, if you acknowledge that there's so much more that you've just, you know, right. scratched the surface, then every little moment is going to keep inspiring you. Exactly. And that makes the difference for me. We had somebody in here from uh, last week from California said, it's the first time trying your food. I've been following you for three years online. Wow. It's like, how did that start? Yeah. I heard from a person who heard from a person who told my sister, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. And I started following you online. And I'm finally trying your food. I was like, wow, yeah. that made my week right there. That's you know? awesome. So. Yeah, that's really cool, man. Um, how, much, uh, how many staff members do you have here at High Point? I say we got about 16 
give or take here. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And uh, we're running about five people in the kitchen right now. Um, myself, the executive. I have an executive sous chef, Brock, uh, Chef Brock Avera, who's does all the work here, as you know, you can imagine how that kind of stuff goes. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and then I've got uh, Ashley, Jeff, and Dimitri who back me up in the kitchen, and that's that's been my uh, core here. You that's know? awesome. Man. You got a really uh, great team here, man. Um, I can just tell, like, just talking with you, and and um, you know, from our first time meeting, you know, just um, you you have just a presence about you, you know, and so. Um, it, it just shows in the way that your team operates and they, um, you, you just have a, a very well-trained and, and, um, productive staff, you know, you. and I applaud you on that. And that's, uh, that's not easy to have, you know, um, it means that you've, uh, that's my corporate side. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome. And I, I mean, that's something that I want to learn more about, um, how you develop that and, and kind of those little tricks of the trade, you know, that's something that that's for another conversation. You know? Absolutely. Absolutely. We ain't giving those secrets away. Um, so, who are some of your inspirations, chef wise? You know, sitting with one right oh, here, buddy. Come on. Uh, come if we're on. if we're talking on a bigger scale, which yeah. I think was the real question, um, Bourdain. Bourdain, yeah. Ramsey, just you know, I'm a crazy person. He speaks to my crazy. Absolutely. Um, l slightly lesser known, David Chang's the man. Yeah. Uh, and even slightly less known to that, I follow somebody online that's been a true inspiration to me. His name's Chef Richard Knott. Um, he works, I want to say, out on the West Coast, but I could be completely wrong on that. But right. I followed him online for years, uh, and that's somebody that whose food really inspires me as well. So um, from him all the way up to the man, in my opinion, Bourdain. Yeah. Um, what was it about Bourdain that you, uh, that you loved? He just didn't give shit, and yeah. he, he was out for himself. Truly, he didn't. I mean, he might have. He's not worried about. He just didn't. Yeah, he's not conforming. He's not doing anything. He was just. He was. He was the Robin Williams of the culinary field for me. You Absolutely. know what I mean? Who's another hero of mine? You yeah. know, I mean, with with so with some people that know with all my mental issues and stuff like that. Like those are people that really inspire me. Right. To do you, no matter what, no right. matter what else is going on, no matter what somebody's telling you, uh, it's just keep doing your art. Absolutely. You know what I mean? Yeah. And that's somebody that I always saw that just, it didn't matter if the camera was rolling or not, he's going to be him. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's always going to be him. Mm -hmm. And that's what I respect. Yeah. You know, be the same person, be, be that person, be your art, make that your life. Absolutely. You know? Yeah. And that's, that's where you leave it. No, I, uh, I completely agree. He's, he's one of my idols, you know, somebody that I've, uh, definitely followed and, and studied and, and just, yeah. And, for somebody like me, like I, I grew up a, a very shy kid. It took a while for me to finally like come out of my shell, and really it was the kitchen. Like you see how I am at, oh, at yeah. the food fights, like just loud, obnoxious, oh, yeah. <laughs> and from day one. You? Yeah. Nah, bro, I, nah, bro. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, you know, it's it. That's where I have my confidence. That's where yeah. it is. You know, and so uh, the food truck actually helped me. To, to get some of that out, too. I, it all started, like, coming in front of the sushi bar, you know, and actually being in front of the yeah, guests, you, gotta, you know? You gotta, you're, you're yeah, you're conversing, I was, you're interacting. Yeah, I was like, I don't want to be tucked away and, you know, nobody sees me or whatever. Like, I want, if I'm making this, I want them to know who's making it. Yeah. Like it's just always how, I guess, uh, cooking in my family has been. It's been a very open kitchen, you know, and, and kind of everything is centered around the kitchen. Um, but, but yeah, uh, you know, that's... So... That's where I started evolving into myself, you know, and, and um, feeling the confidence to try things, you know, and then go back or whatever, you know, and have, um, you know, just just not being stuck in a certain way. I'm doing sushi out there in San Diego, but I'm I'm taking whatever regional ingredients I have, yeah. you know, and whatever uh, inspiration I have and building off of that, you know, and um, and getting recognized for it. People yeah. people like that. It's refreshing yeah. or whatever, you know, and uh, that's the same thing that. Um, like a chef like Morimoto, like what he did is, um, you know, he, he gets a lot of backlash from Japanese people you know, for his cuisine and his fusion style or whatever, you know. But Is that being too Americanized or what? Um, just that he's not sticking to tradition. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which, you know, that's why 
they've just continually refined or whatever. So when you, you break out of that or whatever, you start something new, then it's like you're wasting your time starting something yeah. new. We already have it yeah. this way. It's already, you don't, know, it's don't, already you know, don't broke, don't fix what ain't broke or whatever. Exactly. But, um, that's the journey that he needs to be on, yeah. you know, and, and to continue to inspire people to, to just walk their own path and that, you know, it, Every path doesn't, and when you walk your own path, I guess we, you know, we could say that um, it's not going to be, it's not easy at all. Yeah, you no, know? not at it's all. It's not just a nice paved it clean is, road. It is it the is, toughest road is, to, to go for yeah, sure. And and you're going to have to collect tools along the way to, in order to get over each obstacle. Absolutely. You know, but uh, maybe you finally reach that, that mountaintop or just that, that beautiful view at the end. <sighs> that's you know? the goal, isn't it? That's it, you know. And just you're able to just take that moment and just breathe, you know. I think yeah. that's um, that is probably the biggest inspiration for for me is just that one day to be able to sit back and look back. I know that when I go home, um, you know, I'm just noticing how you decorate your place, you know, and you got the thing, you got these captured moments of you, you know, yeah. and, and um, that's it. Reminds me when I see those photos of myself or whatever. Or those moments that I that I have been uh, been a part of, that it uh, it just makes it real. Like, yeah, you you really did that. You know what I'm saying? Then, absolutely, like, oh, yeah. absolutely. It wasn't all just a dream. You know? Yeah, absolutely. Like, yeah. <laughs> you don't have to hear the uh, the the um, reassurance every day, right? But um, when like those Being your moments, own confidence. Yeah. You know exactly. Yeah, you know? like live for every day and live for those those new highlights. How you're gonna What's going to be the best part of today? Mm -hmm. You know, I think that's beautiful, man. Um, so we have your your daughter over here, Brooklyn, right? Yeah. Uh, uh, I mean, she's off off mic right now or whatever. But uh, what what do you see in in her interest, man? I think Brooke wants to be a baker when she grows up. At this point, that's yeah, awesome, we've been yeah. practicing a lot lately. Uh, yeah. Just making some from scratch stuff. Uh -huh. um, she, we're waiting to hear back to see if she's going on the kids' baking championships on Food Network oh, right really? now. Yeah, oh, so um, yeah, we've been practicing a lot. Uh, that's definitely, I think, what speaks to her most is all the baked goods and yeah. stuff. You know, I think the goal right now is to to own a bakery when she grows up. Right? Okay, I told her I'm going to make her my pastry chef in six years. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> absolutely. That's awesome, man. Keep it in the family, man. Keep it in the family. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, in five years, you can do it in five years. You can be my pastry chef in five years. <laughs> That's right. That's right. Because she turns uh, she turns eleven uh, in a few days, so she doesn't have to wait that extra year. That's awesome. Man. Pastries is definitely one of the things that I don't like being a part of. Like, I don't know. I have this thing. <laughs> I just have this thing about getting flour all over the place. I hate it. Well, I can't get around that with the pasta, but I don't like to measure. So, <laughs> yeah. measuring is what gets. Oh me. yeah, yeah, yeah. Just like so a handful of this. Baking is a science. That. Cooking is oh, an yeah, art. Yeah, so yeah, I don't for know. sure, man. Yeah, that's always. Um, can't measure. <laughs> um. Let me see here. Can't escape the, the 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 line of people trying to get at me over there. I know, man. You meetings after meetings <laughs> after meetings. You're a busy man. I get it, man. Um. So you're born and raised in New Mexico, right? False. I have been in New Mexico since I was ten years old. Oh, I was born in Virginia Beach. Oh, come on now. They don't make people that look like yeah. this. <laughs> I'm just kidding, guys. No. And by that, I mean blonde hair, blue eyes, and yeah. six and a half feet tall. He's gorgeous. Um, Gorgeous. No, that's East Coast business right there. Right. Um, so, yeah. No, I'm from Virginia Beach. I moved here when I was 10 years old. Okay. Uh, so, I'm from New Mexico. I'm a native New Mexican as far as I'm concerned. I've been here 30 or 24 years. So, right. you know, I'm from yeah. New Mexico now. Yeah, yeah. Um, but, yeah, that's, that's, that's where the roots are is in Virginia Beach. Okay. And what um, – uh, did you play sports in high school? Baseball my whole life, yeah. man. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Since I was year-round, since I was five years old. I still play baseball to this day. Oh, yeah? Absolutely. Absolutely. And hardball. I'm not talking about any of softball bullshit. <laughs> uh, no, I play I play for an Albuquerque team here. We went out to Vegas and played in the World Series. We took second place in the nation. Oh, so, wow. yeah, we still we still play hardball, competitive baseball. Going out to Puerto Rico for the International World Series soon. So, oh, wow. Yeah. Yeah. Jeez, what position? 
Uh, first base now. I have first too base. many injuries. Yeah, yeah, I used yeah. to be third baseman and a pitcher. Uh, I'm relegated to first base after yeah, yeah. after six injuries to my left leg. Oh I am, my god! I'm kind of done running and stuff yeah. like that. <laughs> but that's got to be hard, um, you know, in our profession, just standing up all day, man. Having having leg injuries. Yeah, like man. That. Not just that. Like I have I have a couple of spinal injuries that I'm not supposed to be standing for more than four hours at a time. Yeah. I was I was instructed by doctors six years ago not to be standing for more than four hours at a time consecutively, and I just kind of laughed. I was like, all right, let's start with twelve. Yeah, and we'll yeah. go from there. <laughs> like, uh, and still to this day, that's not really a realistic option. Man, that's got to be rough. It is. It is. It hurts. Um, you know, it hurts you know, a lot. I see. Uh, one thing I noticed uh, right off the bat when when we met uh, is that we share a tattoo, and you got you got a gorilla or King Kong or uh, is it gorilla or King Kong? Let's just go with yes. <laughs> Uh, it's just silverback. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the that's the same tattoo that I have on my arm. Yeah. Here and uh, to me, it's it on this side, right? Yeah, yeah, it's on that side. Yeah. Got it. Got it on my arm. Got that's it right. on my jacket. Got it on my socks today too. Nice. You know, my gorilla brother. Uh, but to me, it signifies uh, uh, strength and just just resilience. You know, just never backing down. Exactly. Um, and you know, that's that's you live up to it, man. Just everything. Yeah. You know, what I see, what you go through, the, what you told me, um, you know, about some of your days and kind of the, the struggles and then that you, you still show up, you know, and that you, um, you know, you, you live up to your responsibilities. Thank you. You know, and that's. I'm doing my damnedest, that's for sure. I'm yeah. trying, man. I'm yeah. trying. You know, I'm just, uh, I'm trying to inspire others to, to do more and to be more. And not to be limited by what other people think you are. Absolutely. You know? Yeah. I think, um, you know, when I look around, I see so much work. Like in the world in general, there's so much work that needs to be done. And then you have a lot of people that just stand around and don't, or just need direction. Mm -hmm. You know? Um, it, the world does need, it needs more people that, that come out of their shell and, um, just start picking stuff up and just understand like there's weight here to be lifted, you know, start doing something, you know, whatever it is, just start doing something and stop sitting back. Um, you know, don't, you don't have to get paid for it. Like, like find that, that, uh, that pride. You better, you better find payment and gratitude yeah. is what you better find. I mean, and you better, it, and it better mean something because if it doesn't mean something to you, then you, that's not the field. Even the you gratitude I mean? of just being able to, to look at yourself in yeah. the mirror, you yeah. know, and be happy with what you see and yeah. be happy knowing that, yeah. that you went out today and you did, you did everything that you could. Do, yeah, you know? absolutely. Yeah. And I know gratitude doesn't pay bills, but yeah, yeah. you're not doing what you do to pay your bills. I mean, I guess some people are, but if you're in it for the art and you're in it for your passion, then you'll do what it takes. You mm -hmm. know, I spent three months of the first year homeless yeah. of, at, at my other restaurant. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Because that's what it took, mm -hmm. you know? I would rather have been doing my art than been living in a house. Absolutely. You know what I mean? Absolutely. That's that's what mattered to me. I tell I tell everybody just make sure you got your bases covered. You know, like the the glitz and glamour, like you can get that out of your head. Yeah. <laughs> you know, but uh, you know, as long as you got you got water, you know, to shower with, yeah. uh, to hydrate yourself, and you got a roof over your head, you got food in your stomach, you know, you got you got your bases covered. You know, just keep showing up. Or whatever, and then cover a little bit more, and then you're gonna realize that life is gonna throw you bones mm -hmm. here and there, you know. And so um, you gotta just, you know, as they say, count those blessings, man. Um, but it's it's not easy, um, especially when you see stuff that looks, you know, things that draw attention are things that are shiny, yeah. You know, yeah. and um, everybody looks that way, but. Um, the, I guess it's it comes down to just the attention span. Yeah, you can't be in it for the notoriety because that's not what's that's yeah. not what this is. You mm -hmm. know, like less than one percent of people make the big screen or exactly. whatever you want to yeah. call it. You know, you gotta break it down whatever you want to call it. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah, that's not that's not what this is about. Mm -hmm. This can't be what it's about. No, you man. Know? Yeah, it's um, uh, it's it's continuing. Like, it may sound cheesy. <laughs> Get cheesy. But, get cheesy. Get cheesy. Get cheesy. No, um, but it's 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 love, man. Like yeah, it's absolutely. love. Love is light. Light is love. Like the world needs to be lit. That's you right. know, and <laughs> get lit. No. 
Uh, they say <laughs> they say math is the only universal language. I yeah. disagree. I say food. Yeah is the purest universal language and that's the easiest way to spread love and yeah. com and, and communicate to other people Absolutely. that you care. Yeah, because you gotta take a minute to sit down and and I think that you know the world is going so fast. Just find a way to slow it down. If you could just slow down your, your eating to where you can focus on this food that is gonna nourish you and gonna help you throughout the day or whatever, but then to to read between the lines and see that story and that, that soul that was behind that, mm -hmm. the creation of that or whatever, um, you know, that's, there's something more there, you know, that, that really can um, fill your heart. You know, I'd say uh, that's, a, that's a whole nother that's comment. That's I'm getting deep That's here. a whole nother comment. Shit, I'm just thinking about it. I'm blowing my own mind over here. I'm like, is this thing on? Is this thing recorded? <laughs> <laughs> Actually, and I did notice, so we're going to have to get some audio from this, Rodney, because... <laughs> I, did, I didn't hit record in the beginning, so we missed the whole introduction, but it's okay. Because we're going to get it off one of these other microphones, and we got it right here with you live. So we got it. We're good. <laughs> um, so what are some of your favorite things to eat? Stuff I'm allergic to. Apparently. <laughs> he just, uh, Mike just had an allergy test today and uh, found out some, some pretty drastic news, man. As a chef. I'm allergic to garlic and onions. Oh, my God. So that sucks. Um, like somebody Italian came in. Somebody, yeah, man. somebody came into the restaurant the other day. And said I'm allergic to onions. I'm like, no. I don't think. You, I don't think you could have <laughs> you anything on here, my menu. No, like, like you, you want tortilla? Here, like, <laughs> you want a tortilla? Uh, no. Uh, Pasta is the most uh, homey comfort food in the planet for me. Okay. Um, that's that's Italian Southern comfort love right there. Yeah. Uh, pasta and Southern food. You know, uh, the chicken fried steak, the mm. gravies. Um, and then, of course, Italian food. Who doesn't love pasta and pizza? I mean, have you ever tried combining pasta and gravy? Gra gravy pasta? That sounds that delicious. Sounds cardiac. <laughs> that sounds painful. Sign me up. There's a pasta with some gravy sauce. No, no, no I don't think that's gonna work, man. <laughs> I'll keep my favorites separate for now. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Fair enough. Fair enough. Well, I was noticing one thing. You know, obviously, New Mexico, red and green chili. Green. Uh, you know, green. Okay, green. Just but, get that question out of the way now. It's green. It's green, <laughs> just so you know. Uh, but you could have it on anything. But I went to, uh, I believe it's Wex, mm -hmm. and they actually have the addition of, like, red, green, or gravy. Or, like, if you're like me, no. you get all three. Stop. You just get all just three. Stop. Just stop. <laughs> but I mean, like, well, a, um, well, they serve breakfast and lunch. So, let's, you know. What's gravy, gravy to you? What's gravy to you, though? Because gravy to me, a southerner, is chunky white gravy with sausage and stuff mm -hmm. like that. It's southern chunky yeah. country poutine. I, I like it. I like bacon gravy. I like making my gravy with bacon. So, I like, you know, rendering off the bacon. So, we're still in the same yeah. neighborhood. Yeah, so, you're going to yeah, put yeah. that on your enchiladas next time or what? Yeah. <laughs> look at that face she's making right there that sounds amazing to me that's a whole new trace Dolores right there cheese gravy good oh no obviously I'll go for a run or whatever the next day after I wake up from my my nap <laughs> going to defib is what you um no man okay so uh anything that you brought back from like virginia like any type of uh food or cuisine that i wasn't too deep into it at that point i mean i was only nine or ten when we moved out here so that was still just developing you know i was still playing with food at home and stuff okay uh i brought my love for seafood out here because you know this yeah. is a desert that's mm -hmm. for sure yeah. there's not love for seafood out here exactly um so yeah i love shellfish seafood just all across the board seafood. I love it. You yeah, know what yeah. I mean? So I definitely I definitely bring that with me. <clears throat> and then that's, I guess, part of my Cajun influences comes from there too. Um, we do a lot of Cajun food and just that's one of the best cuisines that yeah. I think there is. There's a lot of flavor development and layers of flavor. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, Cajun seafood, I'd say. But uh, more than anything, definitely bringing the fish and the, crap, the shellfish out here. Yeah, I saw you guys did a, um, a crawfish boil. Oh right? yeah, busiest day of the year for us, man. We do uh, really? a, a, a live crawfish boil. We fly in live crawfish from Louisiana. We do blue crab, uh, snow crab, Gulf shrimp. Uh, we make four different kinds of sausage. We brought wow. gator in. Um, yeah, no, we go wild. It's fun. Jeez, it's man. fun. That's it's wild, dude. Fun. Um, yeah, man. Like, you know, I know what it takes to operate. Uh, on a nightly basis, you know, and just keep everything in order, especially, you know, when you got a team that 
is helping you and stuff. Uh, is bringing in some of these like menus or whatever is that does that help inspire your your staff, like uh like to like culinary wise of like I would love to think so. Yeah, you know, you know, all mean, this new stuff that you're getting introduced to, all these because really, to get to you know like we don't know it all. There's still so much more to learn, mm-hmm. or whatever. And no, but unless you break through that barrier of actually like getting yeah. it in your hands and like trying it out. No, absolutely. Like, you know, you know, I'd like to think that you know every time we come up with a new dish that's uncommon or whatever, someone's inspired. Or uh, best case for me, I'm a weird person though. Uh, I make something and that somebody hears about it, looks at it, and goes, "That sounds gross." Yeah. And then they try it, they're like. I was wrong. Yeah. Like that's that's perfect. Wait you know till what you I mean? Try my yeah. Gravy and exactly. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Touche. Touche. But well, that, that's, the, right. that's the that's the point right there. That's the point right there. That's what I'm saying. That's the point is that you know it's it's it's, it's be creative, but you know you know know your technical skills too, and yeah. and, uh, and you know make matches where matches are made. You know, absolutely. I think um, you know the the five hundred five food fights. I've always you know, just admired them and, and loved, thought it was just an amazing idea. Yeah. Um, and tell me the story about that because I'm not a hundred percent like sure on it. I know that, sure. I, I know that it's been going on for a while. But. Yeah. Yeah. It started several years back. Uh, a couple of buddies of mine, uh, David Ruiz, uh, chef David and Stacy Wilson started it off. Okay. Um, they got it kicked, uh, kicked off. Um, you know, it's, Chop style for anybody that doesn't know, it's uh, you know, time limit, secret ingredients, head to head chefs, bracket style. Uh, and then, um, so it used to bounce around at different locations throughout the city, different days, and stuff like that. Uh, you know, as 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 it happens, people's lives carry on, and then you know, they're not able to keep going with stuff. So, 505 food fights died. Okay, I was a, a competitor in the past, right. and I didn't want to see it fall apart because a it's just fun, right? It's it's cool to compete compete it's cool to watch right. uh and it raises money for charity it's all for charity so how do we not keep that going Absolutely. you know uh so i asked for both their blessings to keep it going you mm-hmm. know out of respect and stuff and they said hell yeah go for it uh and now every single thursday night at nine o'clock at high point grill we have the food fights right you know we, we benefit a different charity every single time uh two different chefs uh, and we, we get weird. I'd like to think I'm getting a little bit weirder than years past because I put some weird ingredients up there. <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, this season alone, we're at on what week 12 right now. We've yeah. raised over $8,000 for That's different great, charities man. in New Mexico, local to New Mexico, That's awesome. you know, that wouldn't have been raised otherwise. Absolutely. And it's not like we're going out of our way to do this elaborate shit. We're yeah. just chefs at the end of our shift getting together and screwing around. Exactly. You know, we're having some drinks. We're playing around uh and then i feel like we're getting a bigger draw because we know where it is when it is absolutely and what it's for every Safety single system. time yeah. you know what i mean um so yeah now we're coming up on the semifinals, as you know mm-hmm. you get nervous me no no i'm in i'm in the semifinals. tracy says you should be nervous tracy all right i'm like yeah there we go anyways uh i ain't gonna say nothing it's 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 just you that. know it's kick ass man it's just head to head chefs it's having fun it's raising money, uh, and, and I don't uh, we just we got to keep this going I'm I'm gonna start soon, here we go, let's talk about it exclusive you Uh-oh. ready for this Uh-oh. season two five hundred five food fights yep. that's gonna start in late July okay I'm gonna be taking applications for teams tournaments Ooh. we're doing two chefs against two chefs this time next season so we're gonna be pairs it can be you and a sous chef it can be you and another superstar chef it don't matter. It's two on two. You and your grandma. It can be you and your grandma. Yeah. But it's two on two. <laughs> it's two on two for the next bracket. I like that. So I like that. There a you lot. go. I like that a lot. Um, um, I like that because me and uh, Ernesto, who I featured uh, uh, two weeks ago uh, on a podcast, he actually reached out to me and he was like, or, or he actually said on the show, um, it would be awesome if they did like line oh, cooks. For real? Or whatever. Yeah. He's, he's yeah. perfect. There, there are so many like, you know, we got the chef who's obviously in the spotlight sure. or whatever. So a lot of attention is going there. But a, a good chef is always like has a great like yeah. line behind. So that's one of the things that intrigued me most about this next season yeah. is that is it an executive chef going to bring 
their line cook who they should be fluid with or their sous chef who they should have just that unspoken language with and right. just be fluid or are they going to try to bring another chef executive chef in right. and be like all right we'll just take over everybody so yeah, we're two yeah, executives yeah. but that can also uh, cause yeah. creation ideas butting heads because it's three dishes not two dishes yeah. because we're having two chefs in the kitchen you got to make three dishes in the I same like amount that. of time i like that so okay much, so three secret ingredients three uh three dishes yeah. same amount of time right yeah uh. yeah and then the winner will battle me. Exactly. Champion of season one. Exactly. Just kidding. I ain't, I ain't won yet, but. That's yet. He still says yet, though. <laughs> confidence. Well, that's the plan. That's the plan. I love the confidence, gotta man. Be, gotta be in it to win it. If man. you don't think you're going to win it, why are you win it? Right, man. Like, right. like Ricky Bobby said, if you ain't first, you're last. You're last, son. Giddy up. <laughs> uh, that sounds amazing, man. I love it. I love, um, you know, I love getting in there and riffing and, and yeah, being in uh, an environment of, of chefs that. Um, you know, we're cheering each other on. We're talking shit like we normally Absolutely. do in the kitchen and stuff. Um, and then, yeah, you got, uh, you know, bring the ladies around, you know. And, hey, you know, you just kind of <laughs> <laughs> bring the ladies around. No, um, uh, I'm excited to see how this continues to evolve. Um, I know I've, t- I've spoken to, um, you know, uh, my team over here, Rodney and Valerie, uh, who have been helping me out, you know, posting these videos on YouTube and getting some exposure for Let's Taco about it, uh, about how cool it would be to uh, start having like uh, like buildups mm-hmm. to the fight, you know, give you storylines, yeah. you know, yeah. stuff like that. So I think that this this is something that is that is going great and it's building up a lot of steam and thanks to you and doing it all for a great cause, you know, which is is just like how we run the restaurant. You don't just sit back and collect. Right money in the restaurant you constantly recycle that money putting it back into the restaurant constantly reinvesting or whatever so that's that's why like there's never like anything that you're chasing it's like constantly right. like you know just Feeds it on keeps itself. it keeps us going it's the yep. hamster wheel that's right <laughs> you know um what um uh, what would you say was some of the worst or some of the most i i've said that they're like sadistic like you're, you're, you're just sick. You're talking about my ingredients yeah, already? Yeah, Come on your, now. your ingredients. I haven't gotten too screwed up. Last week, I'll give you that. The chicken parts was messed up. The, <laughs> the, I, I gave a, one of the three ingredients last week right. was an assortment of chicken feet, hearts, livers, and gizzards. That now, wasn't the easiest one, especially because the second ingredient was those Gensito snack cakes. It was right. those little Mexican Twinkies yeah, with the raspberry right. jelly. That was tough. Yeah. That was probably the toughest week, I'll say. <laughs> the rest of the weeks just had one thing that was kind of messed up, you know, like the donuts or the birthday cake. Right. Um, what did you end up with? You've had two battles now, right? Uh, the first battle was... It wasn't too hard. I think yeah, I first, started you off easy. Yeah, the first battle was bison short rib. That's right. Uh, grapes and popcorn. Yeah, unpopped popcorn. That yeah, wasn't too hard. Unpopped popcorn, you know, and, um, you know, threw something together. Except both me and Sarah, uh, we both forgot, like, in- ingredients on some dishes you on, or whatever. Her on the first dish, you on the second dish. <laughs> yeah, I remember that. Yeah, and we like, oh, dang it. You know, but um, the second time, it was, um, you actually, that's when you, you introduced gave me four, the didn't fourth I? ingredient. I gave you four. I gave you kombucha as yeah, the fourth ingredient. Which I love kombucha. And it was actually, like, the perfect, in, in my mind. That was the one thing that That's tied right. it all together. You said I gave you the perfect basket for you the second time. Yeah, because you actually, like, um, you know. I gave you the butterfish. I thing. always carry around a small bottle of fish sauce. Fish sauce is my extra, extra secret ingredient on top of love. <laughs> but <laughs> right, anyways, I take that. And you had kombucha in there. And it just tied in perfectly. And then I started seeing the green banana. Like, when I go into these battles... I don't have a, uh, obviously, you, yeah. can't, you can't go in there with a plan. That's a mistake. You know, some people are like, all right, I'm, I'm going go in there. This, I'm, I'm making, making this. Yeah, no, that's a no, mistake. Like, he's got to give me a protein or whatever. Yeah, then as soon as th- there's no protein or whatever, then it all goes out the window. Yep. But um, I think um, it, the way I want to tie this in is because you were talking about um, skill set of, of way to, um, you know, way to cook different ingredients and stuff like that. And that's what it comes down to as a chef um, is really just – honing those skill sets of how to roast, how to, how to saute, how to do all these things, you know, how to extract flavor from certain ingredients. And then it's about tasting, you know, so you're having your salty, your sour, your sweet, your, uh, your spicy, your bitter, you know, and then how to tie that into a, into a melody, 
you know, um, so picking out those different ingredients. So that's what I do every time I enter one of these fights is I just look at the ingredients and I find and I slowly start to do my, my basic prep deboning fish or whatever and start to piece it all together you know? that's right and it all just starts with one one sizzle getting it going or whatever and then then let the brain just flow from that's there, right you know but i want to tell you chefs who go to these 505 food fights just stay calm just just breathe relax. and get your first dish out in 45 minutes jesus <laughs> christ get, get your, your first, first dish, dish out in 45 minutes yeah come on just stop trying to put so much on the plate no, no i'm just playing i'm just playing i'm only saying that because i'm in the semi-finals yeah, 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 yeah. No, I'm very excited about that. Um, <laughs> another chef that, um, you know, I just got back in January, and I was running Dia de los Tacos. I was already planning to come watch that night. It was the first uh, battle um, is of the shop. Very great yeah. chef, you know, making some amazing food over there. Um, that was a nice little last-minute uh, surprise yeah. for you, wasn't it? And then he, he had to pull out due to plumbing issues, and then I remember you called me. Or, or sent me a message and yeah. uh, I was like, it's like, like you yeah. want to battle in like three yeah. hours? Yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> like absolutely, because that was actually a slow night at the restaurant, and I was like, I had, I was training the staff, and so I was like, I hadn't done any cooking all day, so I was like, absolutely, please Hell let me yeah. get in the kitchen and perfect. And just had a blast, man. From from day one, I just realized that that was that was something that I really loved doing, uh, and hope to do more. You know, so um, I think that it's something that that we should have a part of any other type of uh, event to draw attention for a good cause, you know, and like, uh, you can always sign me up for that. Excellent. Um, that yep. I would, I'd love that. Um, I know we did one for the fire, uh, the fiery food show. Fiery yeah. That was awesome. Show. That was a lot of fun too, man. Yeah. Um, but you it, won that one, right? Oh, look at that. I don't remember. Ah, yeah. Yeah. I, I won a lot of things. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no. Um, but yeah, man, this is uh, it's been really cool. I think uh, yeah. I think I want to get into the lightning round with you. You know, ask you a couple questions and you just kind of answer do what them. You do. You know, Mark? Yeah, I got answers. Um, what I is think. your what's your favorite piece of cooking equipment, man? <sighs> favorite piece of equipment? Yeah. Like, does my knife count? Or are we talking about equipment? I mean, equipment, equipment. Just, yeah. basic person my knife and my pans like you know okay. let's just cook it yeah, yeah 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 that's it let's cook it okay i mean i have the sous vide and all that stuff that it's fun <laughs> but yeah favorite no nah, yeah, yeah, so. yeah. Like, <laughs> I like that. let's grill it let's cook it that kind of stuff there basics heard that um what about uh what would you like to have for your last meal onions and garlic Onions and garlic. Big old plate of Yeah, I would say garlic. spaghetti and meatballs, probably. Oh. So, all right, probably spaghetti with meatballs and sausage, peppers and onions. Now, prepared by who? By me. Oh. <laughs> like, <laughs> what kind of question is that? Like, I mean, they got to let me out of the cell to prep it and stuff like that, you <laughs> yeah, know? Yeah. Okay. Um, outside of that, oh, shit, I don't know. Something I've never had before. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, I mean, if, I'm, if, if it's my last meal, I don't want to have ever tasted it before. Let's try something new. Okay. You know? I like that, man. Um, Ain't nothing on that side of the sheet. (laughs) (laughs) Um, What would you say is your artistic style and message in your plating? Your plating chaos, chaos. No, no joke, chaos. Like as I even told you before, I said nothing. Nothing exemplifies my style more than having a plan and then it going to shit at the last second and then having to make something up on the spot. Right. That's it. So it's making it's making. Just interpretive, interpretive cooking. Yeah, so, it's uh, what do they call the comedy? Uh, is it uh, what are they? Improv. There we go. Yeah, yeah. That's what I was looking for. Yeah, <laughs> improv cooking. Yeah, yeah. That's what it is. It's you got to cook now. Go. Uh-huh. All right. I've seen <laughs> uh, like your plates. Um, you use a lot of vibrant colors, man. A lot of, like I can tell, and I mean, obviously from your tattoos or whatever. Something yeah. that I share with you too is just um, your love for color and and. Uh, I mean, it's a cliche, but you eat with your eyes first. Yeah, but. I mean, yeah, how do you not? Mm-hmm. How do you not? I mean, no one wants to look at a beautifully executed plate and it all be gray tones right. or all browns or all oranges or all like it's first of all, why? Like <laughs> I'm just looking at it like, all right, well, what's going on there? You know, you know, right. you know, Bob Ross doesn't throw all <laughs> greens on the painting, does he? You know, yeah, yeah. we know what we're doing, you know. Yeah. Um, but yeah, the colors. And then again, like I said, I've been following this guy, Chef Richard, not online for years. And that's just a real inspiration to in my plating style. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, you gotta you gotta make it. You gotta make somebody want to eat it. Absolutely. You know, and they're gonna see it before they taste it. So yeah. 
I dig that. Yeah. Um, what would you say your worst kitchen nightmare is? Jesus Christ. Did I go? Uh, my honestly, the one that comes to mind is a fast food restaurant. Okay. So I'm gonna go ahead and throw this one out there. I was managing uh, a local burger chain around here. Uh-huh. Uh, I was a multi-unit director. I had like 30 or 20 locations or something like that. Uh, I was helping a guy out at the slowest location in the state, uh, and for some reason or another, there was only me and him. No, no. It was just it was just him and me. Like there was no other staff, and I don't know if Albuquerque as a whole planned to come there. <laughs> um, but between like the phones ringing, the drive-through, the grill, the front counter, everything, there was me and one hourly fast food employee. Right. And I just, <laughs> I just looked around. And was like, I want to cry right now so bad. An employee looked at me. He goes, "If this was anybody else, I would have walked out and quit." Yeah. He said, "But because it's you, I'm gonna stay and live through this with you." Like I was like, <laughs> "Thanks, man. Thanks." Oh man. But it was just such a disaster. It was. I mean, I just, I stopped giving. I stopped charging people. I was just like, "Here, just take your burgers. Just take yeah. your fries. Just take your food. Just go away. Stop everybody, calling. Like, everybody just cook your own food." Yeah. <laughs> I would be bad. in the back it crying. Was, it was so bad to where the people weren't mad. Yeah. They were coming up and giving tips, like, here's 20 bucks, man. That looks miserable. Yeah. Like, that is, like, someone's worst nightmare. They were watching from the dining room just like, yeah. oh, I don't want to be any part. <laughs> like, they felt bad for ordering. Oh, yeah. You know what I mean? So Absolutely. that was that was the worst shift I've ever worked anywhere in my yeah. life. Um, I can deal with almost anything else. Right. Like, if the kitchen <laughs> goes up in flames, I'll deal with it. But that, for some reason, will always stick out in my mind yeah. as just being the worst shift I've ever worked anywhere. That's one of those nights where it just... I was just like, <laughs> how do I... How do I? And the phone starts... You think you caught up, and then the phone starts ringing, right. and the fryer starts beeping. You're just like, oh, no, right. man. I, I think <laughs> that's, that's something uh, to say about the mind of a chef or whatever is that, like so many people to please or whatever and you want mm-hmm. to please them all yeah uh but like yeah at the end of the day you're only one person you find yeah. and and without having a night like that do you uh get to see like your full like how much you can actually handle like and, i think so yeah and, and yeah capable of you know what i'm saying and then it comes down to a real level like so at the restaurant obviously we have a very small restaurant and but we had a huge following like mm-hmm. when we had the food truck um, since the food truck days, like that was a very simplified menu. So then over here we expanded and, um, you know, so a lot of those things take time to, to make all these, you know, have 12 different tacos on the menu. Mm-hmm. You got customers who order every single taco you mm-hmm. know, and each taco takes oh, yeah. its own, um, attention to it. <clears throat> um, what I, what I put it down to is that people will wait for good food, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying? Like when I had the food truck, people waited in line for like yeah. an hour before they even ordered Absolutely. and then waited on top of that. But they knew in confidence that, we're, that they were Absolutely. gonna get something good. So um, I had to learn how to slow it all down because yeah, I've had those those nights where it just like, oh my God. Oh no, you know, Like it's just overwhelming, you know? Absolutely. But if you, if you let it overcome you, then you're just putting out shitty food and then nobody yeah. wins because they've, they're waiting a long time, but yeah. then they're getting shitty food. You gotta be at bare minimum at the very end of the day. They gotta be able to say at least the food was good Absolutely. when we got it. Absolutely, you know? you know, and that's and um, you know I thank God that uh, that you know I've had that patience and put out good food and, and still gotten that that positive feedback yeah. and those followers have still come back and um, you know um, you know had can enjoy us in a different experience mm. other than. Like, we're not always just that chaotic. It's just the perfect storm hit that night, you know, yeah, or whatever. Absolutely. Um, but yeah, that's what it comes down to is. Uh, and that's something that I, hopefully, along with other chefs, are trying to change in Albuquerque, specifically not just New Mexico. Um, because in the last three and a half years out in Rio Rancho, we had the same problem is, is, is the, the, well, I will say people thought we had the same problem as food timing is consumers got to understand that when you're making fresh food and you're making from scratch food, it doesn't come out of a microwave in five minutes. You yeah. know what I mean? Like we're building flavors. We're, we're, we're cooking raw meats, you know, it's, mm-hmm. it's not out of the boiler, out of the microwave. So, you know, stuff takes mm-hmm. time, you know, Absolutely. and then when you got people ordering in front of you, it's going to take more time, yeah. you know, but it's real food when it comes out and it matters. And, uh, and, and hopefully people can taste the difference, Absolutely. you know? Yeah. I, I like to, um, Put it to like, you never rushed your grandmother, did you? Mm-hmm. Like, you never told grandma, "Come on, hurry up!" Like, I finished that sauce yeah, up, eh? Yeah, let's go. Like that's, like that's the same love that we're putting yeah. into the food or whatever. Absolutely. So, 
just appreciate it. Um, we try to create a, uh, a relaxing environment for people, but yeah, it's one of those things that um, need to be understood too. Like mm -hmm. some of this stuff takes time, and that's that's also the beauty of it. Is just like we're um, like when you just sit in traffic or whatever, um, you had there's no reason why you have to be sitting for this long or whatever, mm -hmm. whatever, and gets very frustrating. It can be frustrating if you let it, but if you decide to take the positive outlook on it or whatever and just realize this is life trying to slow you down just for this one moment mm -hmm. because, um, you know, just for whatever else it has lined up for you, it's going to time up perfectly. So yeah. just, just let life take the steering wheel right now mm -hmm. or whatever. You're meant to slow down for this reason. If you can look at it that way, um, hopefully it'll help you realize that uh, that when you get that burger, <laughs> it's, it's, good. it's gonna be like the touch of God, just touching your lips. <laughs> Anyways, moving on. <laughs> Please. Uh, oh, all right, man. Favorite musician or bed? Oh God, I wasn't ready for that one. Yeah, uh, I listen to a lot of stuff. Uh, how about? Can I just say not country music? Okay. Uh, I, I'm weird, I guess. I listen to a lot of EDM, especially yeah. in the kitchen. Yeah. Yeah. That's my jam right there is EDM. What is that? Electronic. Come on now. Like dance, electronica, house music. <laughs> oh, yeah. Come on now. <laughs> Come on now. <laughs> the beats. Come uh, on I'm now. I'm going to do that every time I see you from now on. You <laughs> you know, hey, what? <laughs> <laughs> Come on. Lots of boots and cats. Boots and cats. <laughs> exactly. I like that. Exactly. Cool, man. Oh man, it's been such a great time talking with you, brother. Um, oh, you're full of life. You're full of love, man. Um, I'm glad to be, uh, you know, fighting the same fight that you are. You know, um, and you know, I hope you know that, like, whatever you need, any kind of help, uh, any kind, of, anything that I can do for you, man, that I'm here for you. And we got a, a lot more chefs out there that are willing to do the same, man. You got a Excellent. lot. You're very well respected out here. And um, thank you. You know. Um, you know, you're definitely uh, a positive figure for us all to have, man. And, you know, I appreciate you sitting down with me, Thanks, man. talking with me. Yes, sir. So we're going to get into the kitchen, make a taco. I'm starving. I have Unplanned any... taco. Yeah. Improvised taco. That's right. And, uh, yeah, man, I'm excited because I haven't eaten all day. So. <laughs> I'm trying to keep you waiting too yeah, long. Yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go pick the ingredients for you. Please do. Go for it. <laughs> Go for it. Because um, I made no plans for this taco. Yeah. <laughs> or no plans that held up anyways. That's awesome. All right. Signing off, guys. Thank you all for uh, tuning in. Uh, if you're listening on the podcast, I don't know how we're going to piece this together, but uh, I forgot to hit record in the beginning, so we caught in a little bit late. Yeah, yeah. yeah no, it happens. Whatever. We're going to improvise, though. <laughs> That's what we do. <laughs> anyways. Uh, but we'll figure it out. We'll get it uploaded. If not tonight, hopefully uh, in the next couple days. But thank you guys for tuning in, and uh, we'll see y'all in the kitchen.